Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. I would like to thank all the organizers for this nice opportunity to be here, this beautiful city, beautiful institute. Uh, it's my first time in uh, Schrodinger Institute, and I have to say it's wonderful. So uh, today uh, I will speak about some uh, recent results on uncertainty quantification for many agent systems, uh, and uh, uh, I will stress uh, in the following uh, the connection of uncertainty uh, quantification for kinetic equations and uh, the emerging equilibria and the emerging phenomena that uh, uh, stems from uh, kinetic equations of different kinds. So it is a it is a result of several works uh, with many people, uh, Lorenzo Pareschi, Giacomo Di Marco, but uh, Giuseppe Toscani and uh, other people that I will mention during my talk. So uh, just a brief sketch of my presentation. Uh, <clears throat> I, I will revise uh, some basics, uh, basic idea on kinetic quantification for kinetic equation uh, that you already seen in the talk of Lorenzo Pareschi, but uh, that uh, I mean uh, are important to, to set up the follow-up problems uh, based on kinetic equations. And then uh, I will go to kinetic models for, coll for, kin for collective phenomena, that is the main topic of my talk, and uh, how uh, the method that we developed uh, for the physics-based kinetic equation, uh, that is the, the Boltzmann equation, uh, can find application uh, in uh, related models. Okay. Then I will draw some conclusion. So uh, just the, uh, the initial slide that uh, we have seen many, many, many times, uh, not in this form, but more or less the, the meaning is the same. The point is that we have open statistics on uh, inputs uh, that uh, generate some certain parameters of our PD problem, and then we have to uh, to define some uh, efficient numerical solution to uh, post-process somehow the uh, outcomes the, of uh, this PDE, so the solution of this PDE, and uh, in particular in relation to some quantity of interest that maybe uh, we, we are interested in. So uh, the recent uh, interest on UQ for PDEs, uh, I mean, it is not really uh, recent for general PDEs, uh, but it is recent for in, in the realm of uh, kinetic equations, I have to say. So uh, it stems from uh, uh, the uh, large data available uh, and the increased development of HPC and the uh, possibility to construct new algorithm in this, uh, in this direction. So uh, as I said before, the, the point is to, to find some, uh, some strategy to approximate accurately some quantity of interest that may depend on, uh, on all the uncertainty of, uh, of our problem. Okay, so the, the point is that for kinetic equation, the uh, also dimensionality uh, that, uh, uh, that stem from uh, UQ, so from uncertainty, uh, is uh, worsened by the, uh, the dimension of the problem itself. So we have, uh, in, ge in general, a high dimensional problem so that uh, uh, the course of dimensionality is, uh, is present uh, uh, in, uh, in all our problems. Okay, uh, this is the first uh, example of kinetic equations I want to show you. This is the Boltzmann uh, kinetic equation. So, uh, we have F, that is the distribution of particles uh, at a given location X uh, with velocity V at a given time. And uh, we imagine that uh, this distribution of particles is affected by some uncertainty coming from example, for example, from uh, initial data, uh, boundary conditions and so on. Okay. So the first part, so the left part of the equation is a poor transport term. The right hand side is a characteristic of kinetic equation. And uh, here we have the Boltzmann type collision operator. So the Boltzmann collision operator determines the uh, relaxation of velocity toward a given equilibrium. The, uh, so it is a, a kind of thermalization process. So uh, epsilon here is a, the Knudsen number so that if epsilon goes to zero, essentially we are going to an hydrodynamic uh, limit from our kin uh, kinetic equation so that we have the chance to approximate uh, uh, hydrodynamic equation like Euler, Navier, Stokes, and so on with our kinetic equation. And uh, as I said before, Z uh, is a random vector with, and we will suppose to know the distribution of this random vector, this P uh, during my whole presentation. It is fixed, it will not evolve in time. And so uh, we denote it with P of Z, this distribution. 
So the form of the uh, collision operator that I mentioned before is uh, given here. So uh, we see that uh, this collision operator takes into account uh, binary collision term. So we have a couple of particles that are colliding and we neglect tiger order collisions so that we have only binary collisions between particles. And the binary collision determines the change in velocity space. So how they change the velocity, and so the, the velocity change following a Newtonian law, and the law is given here, so there is no uncertainty on that. We see that uh, the post-collision velocity that is instantaneous is V prime and depends on the pre-collision velocity uh, between the two interacting particles that are V and V star. And uh, here is the distance between the, the velocities. Okay, uh, this process is weighted by uh, a kernel, inter interaction kernel that is B, and B determines the, uh, uh, the kind of collision that we are taking into account. So it is the collision frequency, and its general form is uh, the following. So uh, it is a multiplicative factor, B of alpha, uh, multiplied by uh, the relative velocity between uh, particles, um, power alpha of Z. So we, uh, with alpha equal to zero, we have Maxwellian interaction so that uh, uh, essentially it is B is equal to one. Otherwise, if alpha is equal to one, we have the R sphere case. If alpha is equal to two, we have the uh, ultra, R uh, ultra R sphere case and so on. So uh, in general, we may think that we don't know the kind of collision that we have uh, in our system. So alpha may depend on Z itself. And this alpha here, this Z here is from the model point of view. So it's not uh, about data. Yeah? Are we far in between? Yeah, yeah. sure. We, we show an example later on. Yeah. I mean, in principle, we, we can envision to, uh, we, we neglect the nature of the particles, and then we can go from Maxwellian to our sphere to ultra sphere and so on. So in principle, it is. In, in physics, it, it, it is usual to just ask. Okay. okay. So uh, in recent years, I mean, UQ for PDs is a very wide uh, uh, field, uh, but in recent years, we have seen several advancements for UQ on the equations, and uh, they are generally of three types. So the first one is uh, uh, stochastic directing methods, and I want to mention in the regard to the school of uh, Shijin. And here we, there are some uh, Shijin plus collaborators here. And uh, the problem of stochastic uh, Galerkin methods applied to kinetic equations is that they worsen the course of dimensionality. And uh, it is, uh, I mean, widely costly, this, uh, this method. Uh, and, uh, and there are also other problems, like, I mean, we, it's very difficult to uh, guarantee the positivity of the solution for our kinetic equation since F is a distribution. So in principle, it, it, it is positive, okay? it's not, it cannot be negative. So, uh, but it, it is spectrally accurate, that's the point. The, the main advantage of, the, of stochastic Galerkin is that it is uh, spectrally accurate, provided some smoothness assumption on uh, the solution of the kinetic equation. Then uh, uh, there are also multifidelity methods that have been uh, developed uh, recently and they are very efficient and they do not require a modification of our kinetic equation. So it is a non-intrusive method and we have seen some, uh, some insight on this method on the, from the talk of Giacomo Di Marco. Uh, the last method that uh, I want to mention is the, main, uh, is the method that uh, we developed and, uh, uh, and uh, the method that, uh, I mean, uh, will uh, permeate all my, all my talk. Uh, so it is the DSMC stochastic Galerkin method. So it is a particle method that employ a Monte Carlo technique in the phase space and the stochastic Galerkin technique in at the particle level. So uh, why we want to do that is essentially because we want to recover positivity of the solution. So if we, we do that, if we look to the interacting particles, actually we may reconstruct the uh, distribution and then the, uh, by definition, this distribution are positive because we pass through a reconstruction step. Okay, furthermore, uh, we have the chance, uh, uh, we not enter in, in on this because it is a working pro process to pass from the kinetic level to the hydrodynamic one using uh, DSMC stochastic Galerkin method. But it is another story. 
Okay, so uh, the idea uh, has been presented by Lorenzo already, and uh, uh, is the following anyway. The point is to rewrite the binary collision terms, so the binary interacting particles as follows. So we have two interacting particles that we, uh, we de denote by i and j, so their velocity uh, changes according to uh, this process. And essentially, if we are Maxwellian, this part disappear because C is the indicator function. So this part disappear if we are Maxwellian, so B is uh, always equal to one. So this quantity is always uh, less than one. And uh, we always collide uh, following this uh, Newtonian rule. Otherwise, for variable sphere and other type of kernel, of course, we have to take care of uh, the presence of uh, this, uh, this term. And uh, the the, the, as I said before, C is the indicator function. And BIJ is the uh, kernel uh, uh, computed uh, for the two interacting particles. Okay. Now the idea, once we have uh, a compact form of the interacting velocities, the idea is to expand the, the, these velocities in Galerkin series. So uh, we approximate the velocity through a stochastic Galerkin expansion. So we, uh, we fix the orthogonal polynomial basis uh, that is uh, C here. So that is orthonormal with respect to P of Z, the distribution of uncertainties that I said before. So uh, uh, Vm is uh, this sum and the V hat is the pro projection of the velocity in the polynomial space determined by phi m, okay? So V hat is the following. So it is the projection of the velocity inside the polynomial space. Now the point is to, uh, to think to the particles that are not more colliding in the physical space, but in a polynomial space. So we may project the interaction rule that we defined before as follows. So each uh, projection of our velocity of the particle is determined by this process uh, that follows from the projection of the uh, binary process that I defined before. Okay? So W hat ij is given, it is a matrix given here. So uh, it takes into account the, uh, the, the first part of the collision process. The second matrix V hat is given here. So it takes into account the, uh, the, 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 the second part of the collision process. Now we have a, uh, let's say, uh, it is classical to, uh, to see that uh, the, uh, the computational cost of our Monte Carlo scheme in the phase space is of order n, where n is the number of velocities. Now we are projecting our velocities, so they are colliding also in the polynomial space. So the computational cost is n, is the number of, co of colliding particles multiplied by m squared, m is the number of expansion of our uh, uh, interaction scheme, okay? So uh, first point is, uh, uh, so the first uh, question is the following. So can we uh, guarantee that our scheme is uh, spectrally accurate at least at the level of observable quantities? How to do that? Well. Uh, we may reconstruct the distribution function as n, it is uh, the, 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 the empirical density of uh, the velocity centered in the velocity of colliding particles. Okay, so, but we have no more this part here. So we, it is, I mean, it is not inside our uh, algorithm. We have now Vim, it is a truncation. So it is at the approximation of the velocity of order m. So can we guarantee that uh, uh, the observable quantities computed on the original, so that the real uh, empirical density is well approximated by the observable quantities computed for V and M, so taking in, in, into account the truncation of the velocity. So uh, if we take a, a test function, of course, this sum here, we integrate, we have the, 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 the integral of phi vn is uh, the evaluation of the test function for the velocity. And we, we do the same for the other part. We see that uh, the, the, it is the test function evaluated the velocity truncated up to order m. 
And uh, we have this theorem that has been presented already by, by Lorenzo. So if we define a suitable norm, the norm has to take into account both the randomness of the Monte Carlo part and uh, the truncation error of the approximation of the velocities. So essentially, we, uh, we define this norm. It is L2 of RDV, where DV is the, uh, the, the, the dimension of the velocity space, uh, L2 of omega, where L2 of omega is the space of, uh, for, for the random part. So it is the expected value with respect to B of uh, the L2 norm omega. Okay? So if we take into account this norm here, we may uh, provide the following estimate. So at yeah, the level of observable quantities, so for the mean variance, and mean uh, energy and so on, uh, what we have that uh, the L2 norm that I inter we introduced before is uh, bounded by a Monte Carlo part term. So it decays as one over N to power one half because of the collision in the, in the phase space. But the random part, the, 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 the part that takes into account the uncertainty, so Z, decays spectrally. And the spectral accuracy is given by this second part of the sum here. It is one over M to power R, provided the velocity are sufficiently smooth. Of course, it is a consistency estimate. So, uh, okay, uh, I show you, uh, a simple example, the 2D Maxwellian case. Uh, so we fix, we just take into account randomness coming from the initial data, not from the interaction kernel. So alpha it is a set equal to zero. Why we do that? Because that is a very classical paper by Bobilev in the 75, and he fixed uh, the initial datum like that uh, without uncertainty, of course, because there was no, no uncertainty at that time. And uh, was, it, it is possible to compute for each time step the exact solution of our kinetic pro problem. So for F0 of this form, where uh, y is a random temperature, okay? We have that for each time step, the solution of our kinetic problem is given uh, by uh, the following formula here. So essentially we see that if uh, T goes to plus infinity, this term disappear, we have one over y, so S infinity is equal to one over epsilon, and this part here disappear. And uh, essentially we have a Gaussian stationary state. It is the Maxwellian. Okay. It's a universal feature of kinetic equation in the physical space. You always go to the Maxwellian, also in presence of a, a, a kernel. Okay. So the stationary state is a Maxwellian quantity. And in particular, we consider epsilon of this form. So it is a perturbation of uh, two, uh, a uniform perturbation of two. Okay, so the results in the let's say in the I norm are not, not bad in the sense that we start from uh, uh, this is the, uh, the the continuous uh, and then the, the reconstruction in the second row. The first row is the continuous, so it is exit. So uh, we see that we approximate well the, the initial state, but it is not surprising. And then also the Maxwellian. In terms of the expected value with respect to Z, but also in the, with respect to the variance. Okay? So it is the second four plots that are presented here. So it is the initial term and the stationary state. Okay, it is given in I norm, so it is a qualitative result. But what, what if we freeze the collisional uh, tree? And then we see only the Galerkin expansion. So the error given by the Galerkin expansion, actually, we see that. Uh, the, the error is decreasing exponential. Okay, so we have spectral accuracy. And that is uh, uh, computed in terms of the, uh, the temperature. And the second plot, uh, we have here the evolution of the fourth order moment. So we see and, or again in the I norm uh, that uh, uh, we have a consistency of the evolution of the fourth order moment. It is the first uh, non-conserved quantity since we conserve mass density and temperature. And uh, uh, so in the norm, we have a correct uh, uh, approximation of the fourth order moment in presence of uncertain quantity. Okay, so now to, we can perturbate, of course, uh, the collisional kernel that I said before. So we can think, for example, to go from uh, a Maxwellian to a ultrasphere. So it goes from zero to two. 
and then we can, uh, in this case, uh, so the, the average is one of the alpha. And for alpha equal to one, we have exact results. It exists in the literature, it has been computed. I, I, the, the, the reference paper is here, uh, Pareschi Russo. Okay, it's given the, the, uh, the devolution of the stress tensor for alpha equal to one. And then we compared what happens and we have again in the I norm that everything works. And for high dimensional, well, high dimensional for two dimensional random perturbation of both the exponent and the initial datum, we may compute what happens to the stress tensor. And essentially we see again that we are going to the Maxwellian and uh, we follow the, uh, the, um, the, the devolution of the stress tensor in average. So, uh, okay, this was the, 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 the setup of our problem for uh, the physics-based kinetic equation. Now, uh, as I said before, is a universal feature for in kinetic equation is the uh, emergence of Maxwellian in the velocity. It's uh, very well known, it's, uh, it's somehow beautiful, uh, but for other phenomena involving many agent systems, we have no more Maxwellian, so we are no, we are no more Gaussian. And it is the case of collective phenomena. So in the second part of my, of my talk, I want to focus both from the model point of view and from the computational point of view on the impact of uncertain quantities on uh, models for collective phenomena. So uh, this is due to uh, an increased interest in uh, several research communities like uh, biology, robotics, social sciences, in determining the features of a large set of interactive individuals. So what can, what can we say on uh, the emerging features of a large set of interacting individuals? They are no more particles, they are individuals. Okay? So uh, in, uh, again, in recent years, we have seen uh, several works in this direction uh, using a kinetic framework. Why to do that? Actually, because it is very convenient to link microscopic dynamics with the observable one, the macroscopic dynamics. So we have a direct link between micro level and macro level where you can see what happens. So uh, in all this field, actually, the interaction forces are no more uh, physics based. So they are not universal like the physical one. And uh, we have to take care of this. And there is a, um, I want to cite here a seminal book of uh, Prigogin, uh, and where he said that the distinction between individual and collective behavior is much less clear than in physics, whereas in phys physics molecules are exactly alike. Even the individual properties of a human population are subject to statistical fluctuations. It's a book of 71, and uh, it regarded, uh, it is maybe the first uh, work on kinetic equation outside kinetic framework, it is a, a, a book on traffic dynamics actually using kinetic equation and uh, he already observed that. Now the point is that the interaction forces as I said before are not universal, so we have to take care of uncertainties in the interaction forces. And then uh, if we take care of uh, all these factors, the emerging phenomena are, can be also unpredictable. So we have a, a variety of emerging equilibria of our problem. So there are several works on that. I want to cite uh, the, uh, the, the, the works of Professor A, uh, and uh, the works of uh, Fornazier and collaborators, uh, and uh, Maggioni and uh, other people working on this, in this direction. In the uncertain, uh, in the, in the uncertain quantification setting, of course, uh, we have a lot of uh, works uh, outside the uh, UQ setting. So the uh, general equation that we will take into account is the following is uh, quite similar to the Boltzmann one, but different, it is simpler somehow. So we have a transport part here and then uh, the collision now takes place in a, uh, in a different way. So each particles, essentially we will see that interact with all the other N particles is very different from the binary collision scheme that I presented before. So essentially in the right hand side, we have a Fokker Planck operator where the drift now is non-local and we have also the diffusion here. The diffusion can be complex as, as you want. It's the simplest setting maybe. So uh, the uh, non-local drift part has this general structure. So here 
S is a self-propelling term, and uh, the second part takes into account the interaction between all the individuals. They can be metrical, so it depends on the distance between individuals or of other kind. Okay? We'll focus on that. So uh, I want to just to mention uh, briefly that uh, for uh, this equation, we have a lot, se several emerging equilibria. Actually, actually uh, recently we studied uh, the number, the, the, the emerging uh, structure of the number of social contacts in a joint work with uh, Benoit Pertam, Toscani, and uh, Di Marco, uh, where we derived uh, a Fokker Planck uh, uh, equation that show gamma type. Uh, equilibria that are of this form here. Why we, are, we were interested in gamma type because the social behavior, I mean, the number of social contacts is used usually of gamma type. So that's why we derive this, uh, this equation. But the point is that you see that this uh, Fokker-Planck equation depends on delta of Z. And if delta is less than zero, so between minus one and one, we are no more gamma, but we are inverse gamma. So we switch from a gamma to an inverse gamma. It has power low tails. So the uncertainty here has a strong role because the emerging equilibrium may, I mean, lead to a different class of distribution. So it is totally different, yeah. A zero, it can be zero. What? Delta, it can be zero in the, in the limit where delta goes to zero, we have a log normal distribution. So clear from your formula. When delta is zero, the exponential is one. Yeah. So it's not if zero here, we have b squared f, so the diffusion is uh, it's not constant. And here, if delta is zero, we have to we have to take the limit. Actually, it's not equal to zero. We have to take the limit, and then after some passage, you see that the emerging equilibrium. This F infinity of sequence. Yeah. So uh, the, uh, this exponent here characterizes the emerging equilibrium of our process. Uh, other type of models that have been uh, studied in this direction is uh, swarming dynamics. Here is the space homogeneous case. The usual one is uh, with Cooker and Smale interaction, but I will not take into account now. Uh, just to show you that we have, uh, again, different equilibrium states. Uh, and uh, uh, essentially, we have a self-propelling term where the velocity tries to go to, to one, and we have alignment with respect to the local mean. This is the second part of the drift uh, plus diffusion, of course. Now the F infinity has this form and you see that is implicit since uh, U now depends on F infinity itself. And we have a very nice uh, uh, theorem of uh, Carillo, Degon and collaborators uh, where they say that if del D, so the, if the diffusion goes to zero, actually you align toward velocity one, but there is a threshold in the diffusion term with which you go with a, a mean that is equal to zero. Okay, so for large enough diffusion coefficient, so it exists a DC that is a threshold for the diffusion with which the stationary solution is a symmetric distribution with a zero mean. So you see that the equilibrium distribution may vary a lot and that they may be influenced by the, uh, the uncertainty. Now, just to, to uh, follow again the, the path that we presented before. Uh, also in this case, we have a particle interpretation of our model. So the particle interpretation is uh, given here. It is a system of uh, stochastic differential equation. And you see that each particle, so the transport part is the first equation, then the second equation, the, terms, the change in velocities, and each particle interact now with n particles. And then we have a random part that is given by a sequence of independent Wiener process. Also in this case, we may reconstruct the empirical density looking at the tensor product of the either delta centered in Xi and Bi. But it is very classical. There are very, I mean, a lot of results of, uh, uh, of uh, Tadmor, of Carrillo, they, where they study the convergence of the particle system to uh, the mean field equation that I presented before. 
Okay, now let's apply, uh, as before, uh, the projection step. So we uh, project the, 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 the position and velocity in the polynomial spaces. And then we project also the law, the microscopic law with which the, each particle interacts. So uh, we have the, 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 for the transporter step uh, is, uh, it is uh, I mean, it is like that, uh, it, is, it is linear. So uh, the, the second step, uh, that are, uh, for the velocities of the projection of the velocity, you see that, uh, I mean, here, it survives a, an additional factor that is uh, this sum for kappa that goes from zero to m. So it is a matrix uh, for the, the Texas Okanda interaction, actually. So it is somehow suspicious. So something is changing somehow. But now uh, we can provide a consistency estimate. And actually, <clears throat> if we look to the empirical density of the truncated series, and we define the empirical density of Nm, where M takes into account the truncation in the, in the space and velocity, okay, we may provide uh, the convergence for M that goes to plus infinity of N Fnm to Fn. And then the, yeah? P, what is the P of P? And uh, the probability, PP of omega, the set of probability space of probability yeah, with respect to omega. So, uh, is that, uh, we'll start on the P of P is a bit confusing. And uh, yeah, because we have to take into account the results of Z. So it is a, I mean, we have the probability density of also of Z. Yeah, but the, the parentheses are not the argument of the outer P. And uh, the parentheses? Uh, uh, yeah, the, the outer parentheses uh, are not the double P. Yeah, you're right. Sorry. So, so yes, I have to pass it. That was that. Uh, so uh, we have the convergence for M, it is a formal convergence of, for M that goes plus to plus infinity to the empirical density, and then once we have the correct empirical density for N that goes to plus infinity, we have the convergence to the main field. So but it is a no problem. Now, uh, the point is that uh, we have a process that involves N interaction. So each particle interacts with N other particles. So the, the composition cost goes up. It's very different with respect to the kinetic equation. This is the kinetic equation that was before, where the cost was linear in n. In n. Now the cost is a m squared, that is classical, as before, n squared, because each particle interacts with n other particles. And it is a problem because it destroys the computational efficiency of your process. Okay. Now uh, we applied an, uh, a new idea. The idea is to uh, introduce a subset of interacting particles. And then you change the subset of interacting particles for each time step and for each particle. So it is a random batch process, like the, the one that introduced with Xi Jin uh, recently. Okay? So each particle for each, uh, at each time step chooses a subset of particles with which interact randomly. And then for each time step, this set is changed. Okay? So uh, we modify our particle process as follows. Okay, so now you see we have a bifurcation somehow. So you have a nonlinear stochastic Vlasov Fokker Planck equation, and then you can perform classically the GPC expansion as usual. And then you have the, to solve a, a couple system of PDEs, and then you can approximate the statistical quantities is the classical one step. And then what we want to do is to rewrite the nonlinear stochastic bars of Fokker Planck equation as a system of stochastic differential equation, so particles, and then to apply the Monte Carlo Galerkin scheme with fast interactions, and then to reconstruct the statistical quantities. And now the point is that uh, at the level of observable, are they equivalent or not? Okay, just a, a small remark, as I said before, if we apply the fast interaction operator, the cost is Sn, is no more n squared. Okay. It's very, take n to uh, equal to 10 to the six and, and S equal 10, of course, it dramatically reduces the computational cost. But now the point is that you, you are introducing an additional error in your dynamics. What's the error of this, uh, of this process is uh, of uh, order 
1 over s minus 1 over n. So it can be quite big, actually, but you can control it. And you know that it exists. And indeed, uh, we have this consistency lemma. At the level of observable, what you get is that if you look at the empirical density with s interaction, that are randomly chosen for each particle at its same step and so on, uh, we are, how much we are far from uh, the original empirical density, actually, we are producing an error of this order, and uh, it comes from uh, this argument here plus a central limit type argument. Okay, uh, at the, particle, uh, the, the level of computations, what we get uh, is the following. Uh, so here, we consider an interaction that is uh, uh, poor, uh, that does not depend on space. So it is a homogeneous pro pro process, and you see that in the I norm, everything works well, but the point is that the error that you produce uh, reflects the choice of the size of the subset of particles that you consider. And it is indeed the, the, the error that you are introducing with the fast evaluation of the collision set. So the error you see that if you interact, if you take to the 10 to the four particle and then you, you interact with the whole set of particles, of course you decay spectrally and you reach much, much imprecision, but of course it is costly. Then you start to reduce this uh, subsample of particles and then you see that immediately you are adding some new error. But at the very beginning, you are spectrally, spectrally, spectrally accurate. The point is that you can balance the order of the error that you are introducing with the computational cost. Okay, uh, then uh, uh, I have to, to, to move on, but I mean, we, we applied uh, this, uh, this fast collision process uh, also to different kinds of problems, and in particular to problems with space transition that I presented before, and in particular, what we observed it is, I mean, we have not proven that, but it would be uh, nice to prove it, and we are working on that, uh, to uh, what's the effect of uncertainty at the level of phase transition. Of course, phase transition, they are sharp. So as I said before, it is a sharp transition. So it exists at a value of the diffusion that determines the, uh, the mean of your distribution that is equal to zero or equal to one. But now, if you introduce a, uncertainty in the diffusion coefficient, you see that you are smoothing the phase transition process. It is in the I norm, it is not proved, but it is interesting, and, but it is not surprising in any way because if you introduce a perturbation of your diffusion, so you somehow, you see before uh, the phase transition, so the value of the phase transition. Okay, now the, uh, the last topic uh, is, uh, uh, we, we have loosened somehow the, the influence of the kernel with respect to the, to the initial discussion. Okay? In the mean field equation, there, there is no kernel, no interaction kernel. And uh, we are uh, recently, we focused on uh, kinetic models uh, for multi-agent system in the presence of kernels. It is very uh, usual in traffic dynamics, for example. And uh, we restore our interaction kernel here. And we have a particle scheme, again, that the, this is anisotropic in general. So the reaction of the velocity changes with respect to uh, the, the interaction with V now is uh, I1 for the first term and, term and I2 for the second. And the eta here is a random part that is uh, centered in zero with uh, variance that depends on epsilon. Now the point is that if epsilon goes to zero, we may construct a surrogate problem that is of Fokker-Planck type. This is generally easier, but not now, because there is the kernel. And it is a Fokker-Planck equation coupled with the following uh, boundary condition that is uh, essentially no flux boundary, uh, no flux boundary condition. Okay, now the point is that with a Fokker-Planck uh, operator here, generally we may compute exactly the stationary state, but now it's not more prob no more possible because of the kernel actually. And we applied uh, indeed uh, uh, this, uh, this process uh, to, uh, it's not very clear, uh, this process to observe the consistency of the Boltzmann toward Fokker-Planck operator in the quasi-invariant scaling. The quasi-invariant scaling actually is uh, the limit with which epsilon, in which epsilon goes to zero, so that you see here 
the interaction became quasi invariant. So epsilon goes to zero, so interaction disappear and the diffusion disappear because the, va the variance goes to zero, but a different scale. And uh, in this limit, you may obtain this, uh, this Fokker plan. And this Fokker plan is consistent with the Boltzmann one. And in uh, particular choices of the kernel, actually, you may compute the exact stationary state. And the point is that uh, also under the scaling, everything is consistent at the level of the particle spin. Okay. And it is also spectrally accurate, as I said before. Here we consider 2D uncertainty, and you see that you reach essentially matching precision. Okay. It's time to, to finish. Uh, so we have seen that uh, the concept of uh, emerging equilibrium may vary a lot due to the presence of uncertain quantities. And uh, we constructed a new uh, hybrid scheme that takes into account uh, interaction in the physical space that are anyway uh, projected in polynomial spaces. And this process uh, guarantees somehow the spectral convergence in, uh, with respect to the, to the uncertain quantities. Uh, it is by definition positivity preserving, and we are interested now in the IP properties of this scheme. Uh, to appear now, it is an application to plasma physics where we have exactly the transport part at the level of kinetic equation. Okay, further research direction regards, as I said before, the hydrodynamic limit starting from our binary interaction scheme, and then uh, the Landau uh, equation where we take into account long, long range interaction at the level of uh, the collision part, and then the interplay between UQ and optimal control protocols. Since, uh, I mean, it is uh, known that the optimal control pro protocols should be sufficiently robust to somehow dampen the action of uncertainty in, in our system. So you have to take, uh, you have to, to take some decision and then you want that this decision is sufficiently robust, then you have to design suitable optimal control protocols. But it is another story that uh, now we have no time to discuss. Thank you for the attention and uh, that's all.